Mr. Bad Guy, why do you want to shoot me? Not a good choice, was it? Inside the waistband carry. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. And a lot of people carry inside the waistband just like this. Some people don't. They don't think it fits them. It's not for them. Maybe it's not. But we're going to explore the advantages and the disadvantages of carrying inside the waistband. Okay? Look at a couple of different holsters, a uh, couple of hol different holster options. There are lots of, uh, there's a wide array of holsters out there, of course. We could bring out, you know, a hundred. But we're going to pull out three or four that are representative of the various uh, types of inside the waistband holsters, give you a look at them, and uh, kind of go from there. The main thing is, you need to think about it and not discard it. I know some people have. I see comments on forums where people say, ah, it's not for me, it doesn't, it's uncomfortable, or I'm too fat, or I'm too thin, and all those things. Uh, largely, you just need to have the right belt and the right size pants, and it's never been a big problem for me. It really has not. I went through one spell where I had my back was bothering me a little bit for some reason, and uh, I didn't wear it inside the waistband for about six months. But other than that, it's, it's been fine, whether I've been a little bit overweight or underweight or whatever. Uh, and I don't really buy a special size pants. I just wear the pants. You know, you don't want to be wearing pants that are almost too small for you necessarily. You know, or a belt that's just barely big enough because you might need to loosen it a notch. You know, and that kind of thing. But by and large, it looks awkward if you've not done it, maybe. And you think, wow, that gun is stuck in there like that. And that's kind of weird, you know. But regardless of the looks, it's a very uh, convenient way to carry. You notice all you need is a garment that covers your belt, basically. And the gun is covered. That's the real beauty of it. Okay, right there. And uh, this shirt I'm wearing, it, it covers even much more than that. But then again, you're bending over and, you know, your shirt rides up and all that. And so you, it's almost not even a concern because as long as you're covered up to the bottom of your belt, you're in good shape. And, of course, these super tuck holsters like this, you can even tuck in, which I don't do generally. You can actually tuck your shirt, pull it out and tuck it down in there and do all kinds of fancy things with it. I tend not to do that. But one of the big advantages is that, is the fact that you've got belt covered, you got the gun covered. There's not a holster hanging down here and all that. And the other thing is, it really holds it tightly against your side. Now, that's uh, not to be underrated, uh, underestimated, because so many outside the waistband holsters I've used and tried, the gun wants to flop out, just the weight of it. You get it up high enough, you tend to want it up as high as you can get it, and it wants to flop, you know, to me, and, and print really badly. Uh, so it eliminates that issue. So inside the waistband is a wonderful way to carry. It, it's worth trying. It's worth working at a little bit, uh, getting the right uh, garment, clothing, pants, belt, uh, holster. It really is, believe me, if you're committed to carrying a firearm, okay, legally. It really is. So now I happen to have this one in a crossbreed holster. Uh, I'm not selling holsters today. That's one that I, I have uh, discovered that I like as well as any of them and better than, than most uh, at this point. I go, have gone through a lot of different holsters uh, and this one is nice, has a lot of leather and you forget that you have, have the gun on. Okay, It has kydex on the outside, the gun comes out nicely, goes back in nicely you know, and uh, you don't have to pull the holster back, the kydex is there, it maintains its shape. Okay, Let's walk over here and look at a couple of holsters I have. I have many more than this, as you know, <laughs> if you've seen uh, my holster videos. Uh, this is the, uh, the the genre right here, and this is a, a, a type of holster that is becoming more and more popular. This is another crossbreed. This is for 1911, and I've actually done a little carving on it, too, and I've actually carved on this one. Uh, they offered in a combat cut where uh, the holster is not as much in the way, quote-unquote, uh, if, if you feel like it's in the way. And I, I have actually uh, carved on that some myself. I carved this one off totally, almost level with the top of my belt, just because that's the way I like it. And, uh, and this one I'm not carved on as much. And uh, that one's really nice. I carry the uh, Cobra Carry in that some sometimes. This is the Comtac uh, Minotaur. And it's, as you can tell, it doesn't have quite as much leather, but it's, uh, it's on that same vein and it's very comfortable. I uh, got that for the PPS. And then when I sold the PPS, Walther, I ordered another shell for it 
and this is a shell for a Glock 29 or Glock 30. So nice mountain carry piece, huh? Glock 29, 10 millimeter. Pop that in, carry it the same way, see? So uh, that's a sweetie for that. Uh, there's another one I've been meaning to get just to show in holster videos, and that is the uh, Galco uh, King Tuck, it's called. And whenever I look at a Galco uh, rack anywhere, I, I never seem to find one. They're apparently really popular, too, and they're selling out everywhere. So uh, I'd, I'd show you that one as well. But it, it really is a kind of a copy of the crossbreed, basically. Same, looks like the same same thing. Okay, but anyway, they look strange. I think, wow, all that leather. <laughs> but when you put it on, it feels really good. Now, all that leather is what protects you, see, uh, against the gun, pressure the gun. It spreads it out, spreads out the weight, spreads out the pressure. So ugly as it is. Uh, it's 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 nice and I'm sure you've heard people brag on that one before now they're kind of pricey but they're not really you know any leather holster is kind of pricey yeah go ahead and figure you're gonna spend somewhere between 60 70 and 150 bucks you know leather a good leather holster leather and kydex or whatever they're just not cheap however I started out with these uh, these these clip-ons when I started carrying inside the waistband, now this was the type I, that I've cut on this one since then, but this is an Alessi uh, Talon clip holster. I started with that one, and I'll be taking this one off. This gun is hot, so let's lay it right there. Uh, it's my Glock 27, by the way, Gen 4. Uh, I'll go take this out. As you can see, as I said, I've carved on that one, and uh, I really like that. The way I've got that butchered up. <laughs> And uh, but this is the one I started with. I'll clear it just to make anybody nervous here. Uh, now this is actually for the big Glock. It's for a Glock uh, 21. I used to use that in competition in Ipsic, believe it or not, uh, when I would shoot with a Glock 21 or Glock 30. But uh, so that's a little extra weight. But that's a, that's an old that's a vintage holster right there. The beauty of those was and, and is that you can just reach in there, clip it on, even with the gun in it. See. It has a good clip. That clip hangs on your belt, and that thing's ready to go. You and the holster stays. So that was a pretty nice holster. I wore those for years, many, many years when I was uh, working with uh, as a reserve deputy for the 10 years. That's probably all I used right there because we were working playing clothes in uh, security and trials or whatever it was or on the road, and that's why I had my Glock 23 in. You yeah, know, that was it right there. And those are nice. Beauty of it is, you're somewhere where it's illegal to carry inside. You reach back and pull that off and I can take it out of the holster. Okay. You, get, you get kind of a knack for that, put them right back on. So you have convenience with that, uh, but you give up some of the comfort. You know, you feel a little more pressure. It doesn't fit quite as well, but they work. You know, I used that for a long time and not a big deal. Pretty good holster. Now that one, I don't know what they, if they still make that or what that sells for. That's a, that's a kind of a custom company. They're, they're not cheap. They're probably 70, 80, 90 bucks. I don't know what they sell for. You can look it up and see if they still make them. I know, I think, uh, I believe Lou Alessi passed on several years back. But the Don Hume holsters are very similar. And uh, that's what this would be. And that's actually for, it looks like a Glock you know, 19 or something. But same type of thing, different type of clip. I've used these a lot too. Yeah. As long as your clip works, you're in good shape. In fact, you don't want the holster coming out with a gun. Okay? And that's one of the criticisms of these, these types. You know, people will tell you that uh, you're going to bring the whole holster and gun out if you're not careful sometimes. But, uh, but they work pretty well. These things are about 25 bucks, I think. You know, that's one of the best buys in a holster, a Don Hume, you know, uh, in a pretty quality. Uh, a piece of merchandise. I brought one out here for a revolver. That's for a K-frame. They work too. You know, some of us uh, like revolvers. Might want to carry a K-frame. You know, I've got a nice little model uh, 65. Works great in that. Here's another Kydex. This is Galco. Galco tends to make some nice holsters, don't they? Uh, they ought to start a business. Uh, I like that one the way it clips in there and fits like a glove. It really does. And that's a clip-on. If I were going to wear a clip-on, that would be it. Easy on, easy off. It's got a nice clip. Uh, Codex is good stuff. You reholstering, you know it's going to be there. It's not going to have closed up on you, you know. And it's, it's a handy, handy holster. 
pin out. Like I said, this isn't, I don't mean for this to be just a holster video, just want to give you some of the options. Again, some of the things you want to think about if you're carrying inside the waistband, and I guess in, uh, concealed in general on the belt, is your garment, your choice and everything. Make sure it's long enough to cover so that you're bending over and you're doing things that you're not printing and scaring people with your firearm, even though millions of people now carry concealed. There's still a lot of people who are ooh, afraid of firearms, you know, and you don't want to startle somebody at Kroger or uh, Walmart or wherever. And so you want uh, to have a garment that covers pretty well. One of the beauties of these is, uh, again, they're against your skin pretty well. One reason I like the little Glocks, the baby Glocks, is it's almost hard to make them print. You know, you get a big butt sticking out on the gun and it's more likely going to print, you know, you're moving around, reaching for something, bending over and everything. But uh, but these things keep it right against you just 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 nicely. Just like that. And they're really handy. Uh, but getting the garment out of your way, of course, is critical when you're carrying inside the waistband. I know a lot of you out there are just now maybe getting a permit. And again, I'm not the expert on this, but you want to make sure you get this hand involved and you're raking that garment away. That's your most important uh, mission. You don't want to start grabbing for a gun. Getting the garment first out of the way. Whip it back totally. Jacket, shirt, whatever it is, and get it out of the way and then go for the gun. Got to do it in uh, sequence. And then you got this hand here in case you get tangled up. You know, you always want that hand there ready, of course, to pick up the firearm. But to mainly get that shirt out of the way. Okay, and then when you're reholstering with any of these, you always want to, I always like to see it going in pretty much and uh, keep, make sure that finger is nowhere near the trigger. Because when you're reholstering, if you're kind of lackadaisical, you got that finger in there, you're liable to get it, uh, boom, get a round going off. So keep that finger way off the trigger. Make sure there's no material stuck in there. Because sometimes you go back and your shirt maybe has loosened up and you get it caught in there between. Or maybe this shirt, you know, is, is kind of hanging in there. You just, just got to be aware of all those things. Okay, safety first. That's clip-on, and they work. They really do. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, the Don Hume, and there are probably others out there. Uh, Uncle Mike probably makes something uh, like that uh, that does just fine. Okay? I really like that one. Uh, so my evolution of all these holsters is I went from the clip-on, the lessee, to any of these. And I really never wanted to bother with uh, these that, that I had to take my belt off you know once you get spoiled by the clip on you think oh man I gotta unsnap that and run my belt through it and all that so I, I just really had a mental block against that kind of holster this is a Galco uh, I think summer comfort it was called I used that for a good while you've seen that in some videos and uh, and then I I got this uh, Royal Guard which is kind of the upgrade from that it's just horse hide it's just a little pricey this thing's over a hundred bucks and it is a nice holster, probably one of the best holsters of this type, short of a custom holster. And uh, I usually just put my take my belt off and run through it, but uh, you just stick it on here like that. I usually run it. Well, I don't know about my belt loops on these these pants. So get this on here, right? And uh, I'm not sure I like where that. I usually try to split the belt loop. Maybe I won't do it because I like it back there a little ways. That's the other interesting thing about. Uh, jeans or whatever you have you realize where which ones have the belt loop space the way you want them for a holster okay now that is a nice holster that's a good one okay i think it's kind of a copy of a milt sparks maybe that sort of thing and uh you really hold the snug Here we go. All right, you can see that thing's not going anywhere. You can do somersaults down the hill. That holster nor the gun are going anywhere. Let me try this thing out. <laughs> Sweet. So I carried it in that for a good while, maybe a year. I have one of those for uh, 1911 as well. Inside the waistband, really good and snug, good looking holster, no doubt about it. So, so that's a viable option right there uh, to consider. Okay. And that's about it. I've got a bunch of holsters. Uh, you got some that, that like that. That's another clip on, has two clips. Uh, 
you've seen them all if you've gone into shops and, and most of them work okay it's a matter of uh, comfort I think and security making sure it's secure to your belt and it's not going to pop off that's uh, one of the important uh, factors of course uh, now before I have a little garment change uh, again if you're going to carry concealed uh, I think it depends on whether you're young, old, or what kind of dress, what garments you tend to wear a lot. You know, they're important to think about when you even consider a holster. I like shirts like this. Heavier shirts, lighter shirts. Uh, I'm really comfortable like this. So I'm kind of old school guy. And uh, I, don't, I don't hang out in uh, sweatsuits and that kind of thing very often, or sweat tops or hoodies and that sort of thing. Uh, I like a shirt that buttons up. I got a pocket and, uh, and it's, just, it's just so handy for me to rake that out of the way and had my firearm. We, I used to shoot matches like this for years uh, inside the waistband and uh, it's just very very natural for me. Uh, but there are other garments that, uh, that you'll find yourself wearing in different ways you want to cover up your firearm. So I'm going to step into my uh, outdoors closet here and change real quick. Okay. Alright back from the dressing room. Uh, Change shirt a little bit here, and uh, uh, one thing I wanted to show you too, uh, I don't have my gun, do it. Actually, I've got it in kind of the super tuck mode. Uh, you see, this is one of the uh, possibilities. I don't use that, but uh, you can actually, you know, have the gun on and kind of, kind of, you know, super tuck it, tuck between the gun and your pants. Some people do that. Uh, I tend not to. I just uh, prefer a covered garment over the whole shebang, you know, or nothing at all. Uh, works better for me. Okay, I did put the uh, cross read back on there too while I was in the dressing room. Uh, so, but this is what a lot of people wear a uh, shirt like this. I know these days, and of course in summer carry and, and that kind of thing with t-shirt, short sleeve t-shirt or whatever. Uh, and as long as you got something that's kind of long, you know, it's not hard to cover. And this is about as good as you can do. It's about as well as you can get a gun against your body, you know, with the, I think, with the inside the waistband. That's one of the advantages of it. And then, of course, you can uh, you can draw. Now, you have a different uh, operation, of course, getting the gun out. I think most people uh, recommend you, you don't grab this shirt with his hand. You grab this hand aggressively. You know, the bad guy's about to get you. You grab really aggressively and pull way up and pull. You know, this hand is nothing but gun, of course. So, uh, got to get that shirt up uh, with force, you know, with power. You're not worried about ripping your shirt or damaging anything. You just grab that shirt and get it out of the way, totally out of the way. That's the important thing. So, so you can just kind of dress like a lot of people do, just wearing long sweatshirts, uh, t-shirt, whatever it might be. You can still, of course, carry that in this mode. Keeps that gun, you know, against your body uh, pretty well. Uh, the thing I didn't mention was uh, carry ammo. Now I don't carry a magazine pouch very often uh, at, at all, but uh, it is an option, of course. And if you're carrying concealed, uh, whatever gun you're carrying, if it's a larger gun, of course, or any gun, you can carry magazines over here. And one of the things that uh, to think about, if you're kind of new at this, is you can carry any size magazine you want for a reload. You know, most of the smaller guns we carry concealed offer larger versions that uh, also have higher capacity and take a larger magazine. And my philosophy has always been, why not carry a larger magazine? If, uh, if it's really hit the fan to that extent, well, you're gonna be reloading this firearm. Of course, I thought about that often in the police work I was involved in. I always carried a larger magazine. Now, there's a Glock 23 magazine. I'm packing a Glock 27, of course. And then you can even <laughs> go further. That's a 40 caliber magazine. It'll fit in any 40 caliber Glock, and it's a 22 round magazine. So uh, you know, it depends on what you're doing. If I were involved in police work, this might be what I carry. I might carry a couple of these. I don't know. You know, if uh, again, if you're in a situation where you're having a reload, uh, you're into it. So uh, why not? If you're decked out and that's what you're ready for. But generally, I don't carry a mag pouch. Uh, but uh, that's, that's an option. And of course it conceals, you know, so I had that on the whole time uh, I had my other shirt on. I don't guess you saw it, but uh, that one fits pretty, I think that's century leather, I forget. But that one fits, and most of them do, just uh, hug your body. That's not a problem, finding a good mag pouch really, is it? So another option, again, carrying like this. Now one thing I didn't mention, I guess, is uh, one of the disadvantages of inside the waistband carry 
is that the gun is, is the same as the advantage. You know, it's closer to your body, more concealable, and less likely to print. But by the same token, and because of that, it might be a little slower, uh, you know, on the draw. It's a little less accessible, perhaps. You've got to get in there against your body, and get your grip on it, you know, pull it out. Uh, I've done it so much, it, 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 I don't notice much difference. Uh, not, not boasting, I just don't notice much difference for myself because, as I said, I used to compete uh, from that uh, holster years and years and years, and I almost prefer it. Uh, but an outside the waistband holster does have the gun out a little further and maybe easier to grasp, depending on your firearm. But uh, once you practice, 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 train, uh, it's not a big deal. But it is against your body, okay? And I personally don't like this kind of carry. I mean, you know, whatever you have to do, you have to do. It works. You know, you can, you can get it done. Not a problem. Uh, I prefer an open shirt. But that works pretty well, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, fits pretty well. Uh, I, it's just comfortable to me. You know, uh, it, it feels awkward to you. Uh, it probably will if you've not tried it. And uh, you put a gun on like that. But uh, these, these gun or these holsters with a lot of the leather on them, uh, I think you'll be surprised how uh, it makes that thing disappear and you almost don't know you have it. You really forget you have it. You've got to be careful that you don't have it somewhere you're not supposed to because you'll forget it's on. I mean, really believe that. And uh, one advantage of the way I carry, of course, is I, I like the baby Glocks. And you can carry a Glock 23 or a Glock 22 the same way. They'll, they'll work as well. It's just you got a longer grip. But the beauty of a smaller gun is, well, you should be able to see there, it, it just fits better and you've got less uh, jabbing you. Uh, when you're riding in a car, there's a world of difference between a Glock 27 and a Glock 23 even, and then especially a Glock 22. <laughs> uh, they can be uncomfortable in any inside the waistband holster or even outside the waistband holster. But this one here, it, it fits like a dream. It's hard to beat. Anyway, that's kind of the quick and dirty of, uh, of inside the waistband carry. Hopefully that's been of some help to you. Uh, those are the holsters that they've worked for me, and there are probably some others out there. It takes some experimentation. It just does. Uh, you know, check the forums, uh, look what people are saying, and try to, to get a good holster to begin with. Think about what gun you're going to carry. Don't try to carry it too big a gun. That's always the, the problem. Everybody wants to carry a gun that is really too large, and they get into it, and they bought four or five holsters trying to make it right, and they realize, oh, I should have gone with a smaller gun, and they end up with a smaller gun, and they end up buying four or five more holsters trying to get the right holster. So it's just a process. But anyway, hopefully that that's been helpful inside the waistband carry. Do it legally, be smart, and life is good. Oh, Mr. Bad Guy, why do you want to shoot me?